to Magazine Builder Worlds. This is a Burroughs and Badgers batch build. Whatever. Um, uh, in this series, this is part two of a series where I am making three different um, sets of buildings for Benfliot, my Burroughs and Badgers village in the marsh on the north bank of the River Tamesis. Uh, to the east of the great city of London. If you saw the last video, then you'll know what I'm up to already. I've made kind of like the base parts and they're ready for the building. So if you haven't seen the last video, what have you been doing? Go and watch the last video. It's back there. Part one. Find it and you can see me build the bases. Um, if you have uh, seen that, skip on. And let's get on with this. You'll remember that um, I made uh, this base which is going to have, um, well, effectively three houses all together. One on here, one on here, one joining them up. I'm trying to make a bit more, have a bit more of a street effect in Benfliot. Um, and I wanted a few kind of like seedier dwellings, lower life kind of like dwellings. Because a couple of the houses I've built so far have been kind of grand. They're a lot of fun. The Red House, um, if you go back and look at that. Do you know what? I can't remember if that was on the video. I don't think it was. So it's a series of photographs on my Magathea Builder World's Facebook page. Um, but if you go and look at that, I kind of like had um, Rat's House from Wind of the Willows in mind when I built that. It's kind of grand. And so is the Red Barrel Tavern. It's quite a flash building. But I want quite a few denizens in Benfleet, and I want them to have all their own places. So this is going to be three buildings. Uh, house here, house over here, and a kind of loft in between so I can have boats go through underneath and the loft will be for birds that have perches and that kind of thing. Then um, I want to build a few more raised up so higher up out of the water so I get um, space underneath um, and then a much higher platform to have a building on and then high walkways as well. So this is the second one then platform built across here house going to go up there um, one ladder up here and then it's going to have a walkway across the front and down the other side. Uh, that's kind of like the plan. And then the third building, the third building is built on this. It's going to be a little different because it's been built mainly on rock. There's one lump of rock that sticks out of the water near Benfield and um, it's being used, utilised, or going to be utilised uh, and going to be made into, uh, first of all, the mayor's uh, abode. The mayor of Benfield is the uh, puffin character from Barrows and Badgers, this dude cute isn't he yeah and um, I'm gonna make this into a lighthouse this model so from that point of view it's gonna be taller um, as to give the table a bit of height and I want a bit more fantasy whimsy with this building I say that like I know what that actually means I don't know the others are gonna be kind of housey and they're gonna be there this one I'm hoping to have a bit more kind of sticky out and a bit odd and a bit strange and a bit more when you look at it and go yeah that's clearly not a historical building that's clearly not one that can just be kind of like stuck in a, a Victoriana game or whatever else. We probably could. So those are the three buildings um, I'm going to be working on. The uh, Each three of these little islands have got to the point where I can start construction on the building. Uh, and all the buildings are going to be made with the same material, which is going to be made from balsa wood. So the walls are going to be done straight out of balsa. Um, most of Benfield is made from balsa wood. I like the stuff. It's good. Let's see if we can find some here. I'm going to wave some around. Let's talk about the benefits of balsa wood. What a good idea. Um, for um, viewers uh, around the rest of the world, I don't know how readily av available balsa wood is in, say, the US, in hobby shops and that kind of thing, or uh, where else we get washed? Right across Europe, uh, in the Antipodes. Um, balsa wood is a hardwood, although you wouldn't believe it because it's kind of soft. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure how... Uh, available it is in other parts of the world. In the UK, balsa wood is readily available at decent model shops um, and at Hobbycroft. Well, let's not go there, eh? Um, <laughs> it's pretty cheap and easy to work with. You can't do. There's some stuff you can't do with it, granted. And I have talked about balsa wood before, but for making these kind of models, it's absolutely ideal. You buy it normally in large rectangular strips, and it's uh, good value for money if you go to the right place. I buy my box of wood as often as I can from local model shops. I like to support my local stores rather than get it online. 
doesn't survive very well traveling either um so from that point of view going and picking it up is much better and i've got um uh, a model shop only a few miles away from me that mostly specializes in radio controlled cars and that kind of thing and railways um uh, but they have an epic rack of bolsa look at this how cool is that um uh, uh, and you can do that you can then buy it in all sorts of different thicknesses um Conveniently, these are uh, labelled. Look, this is um, 0.8 millimetres uh, thick. This one is um, 3 millimetres thick. This one is 1.5 millimetres thick. Loads of different thicknesses, roughly the same size, which is about 10 centimetres across. 9. Point, well, yeah, yeah, 10 centimetres across. Um, the other cool thing about Boxer Wood, of course, is you can get it in loads of different shapes and end sections. So in this bag I've got look, I've got round section, I've got square section of different sizes, um, that's a five millimeter square section and that's about four millimeter square section, six millimeter square section, you get um, half round, uh, you can get half kind of like squares cut into the diagonal, so it's very very versatile from that point of view. Really worth using, I like it a lot. I'd never understand why um, people make who are into making foam models, and I love working with XPS foam, and I'm learning about using XPS foam all the time. But I, it kind of baffles me why a lot of people go to a lot of effort to work in XPS foam and make XPS foam look like wood when you can just get wood. I suppose if you can't get wood, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> smutty, stop it, Tim, stop it. If you can't get balsa wood, then I suppose carving your XPS foam to look like wood makes sense. But otherwise, it never seems to me to make sense to actually make something else look like wood when well, you can use wood. I do definitely, as I said, recommend, get, recommend going to your local hobby stores. These sheets here, look, this is um, 91 centimetres long by 10 centimetres wide by 3mm uh, thick. That came from my local model store, £2.45 a sheet. That's a lot of model you can get out of that. If you go and buy this at Hobbycraft, it'll cost you at least double that. Um, £2.30 a sheet, that's for the 1.5 mil, 0.8 mil, £2.10 a sheet. And and some of those set, these square sections, that says 83p. So it's not only is it decent to work with, you can stick it with lots of different glues, you can use super glue on it, you can use um, proper woodworking glue. Uh, I use, tend to use Gorilla Glues, you can use my favourite which is a, uh, a solvent based all purpose adhesive. Any of those work with Bolster. So they're really well from the work, it's really good from that point of view too. So there, look, I've expounded enough about Bolsterwood. you'll get the idea. I'm now going to have a look and we're going to see what we can actually do with making these buildings for this set uh, to go along with my Benfliot B&B models. So um, oh yeah, I'm going to start with... The ground floor of the lighthouse. That's the first floor for you people on the wrong side of the pond. Come over here. Come on. Don't be shy. All right. I decided I'm going to start with this chap. Um, which is quite cool. I'm trying to achieve um, slightly less neat um square and straight up models because they're kind of like at the rough end of town and i want to be worn out and all the rest of it the problem is, is that i'm having difficulty because i can't get out of the habit of doing it but this is this is okay this is kind of a bit wonky in places and a bit shonky um i'm going to use five millimeter thick balsa wood here um to be the floorboards that's going to go on here as you can see it doesn't quite go that way although i could do it lengthways you'll probably get two lots out of it so my first job then is going to be to cut some six and a half inch lengths of this board i'm not going to cut individual planks uh, i want most of it to stay in one piece because i think what i'm going to do is make the whole floor lift off with the building so you can get easy access underneath if you want to um, so i'm going to cut a six and a half inch strip and then another six and a half inch strip because i'm going to need part of that um, and then that's just going to lay on that top bit there. So this is what I mean about how easy it is to work with balsa wood. I'm going to zoom in down here in a minute. Six and a half. Now, uh, three lines. My old man told me 
because he was a mathematician. And you need three points to make a straight line. And he's completely right. So here we go. Okay, so new scalpel blade. Um, I like using scalpels as opposed to craft knives and work with bolts if I can. And I'm going to use several just cuts across. Obviously, cutting across the grain isn't as neat as cutting along with the grain. But that's wood, so it's just like cutting with real wood. Because it is real wood. So there's our six and a half inch strip. I'm going to make sure I get another one. Now, I'm not accurately measuring this because I don't want it all to be really super accurate. Um, but I think what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to make this. There we go. So, here then is our base part of the model. And all I'm going to do to do this then is really to lay this on. Um, it's going to overhang this end a little bit. It's not going to overhang here because of this set of stairs. Although what I could do, I suppose. <laughs> now we've got those six and a half. Cock it. Um, is I could probably have had a bit of overhang on this end. And make this another. Yes, yes, I could have made it seven inches, couldn't I? Arse holes, seven and a half. Seven and a half inches long now. Bollocks! Gonna get rid of all that and gonna do that again. Like it was perfect first time around. Starting with this this one here, and I'm gonna put a flat platform on here. Uh, I'm gonna use five millimeter balsa wood. Um, and I'm gonna have I'm gonna cut two different lengths. I'm gonna cut a six and a half inch strip bit here to go on the back, and then I'm gonna have seven and a half inches to take into this bit here because I want to be able to come up wall across there across the front. So splendid, right? So now we've got. So um, six and a half inch long five millimeter balsa that's going to go at the back that overhangs on the edge here, and this is some seven and a half inch balsa which is going to go overhang both ends because then that way there I can step that straight up from that set of steps. All right, which is pretty cool. Um, and what I need to do then is make a mark because I don't want too much overhanging there and. Uh, Kind of, uh, kind of, kind of there, and that way there I can trim down. What I don't need I'll trim that off. Here's the difference between cutting across the grain and with the grain. Check this out. Straight through one go, as opposed to three cuts cutting across the grain. Cutting zero mark. Right? Oh, that's okay. Now my plan with this base is actually to make it so I'm doing it in two pieces. There we are. Put it back in the shot there. So this now is gonna sit over here. And this bit's gonna sit over here. Um, and my plan with this bit of the model then is this is gonna be one solid piece, gonna draw into it um, all the uh, woodwork we're going to carve it down a little bit to make it more like wooden planking heavy duty but I'm going to make it so this bit so the house is actually attached to this so you can lift this off and get it really easy access to the underside the the, the below decks kind of area um, uh, yeah that's kind of my plan so the next bit then is to score scribe into the balsa wood the planking easy okay Come back and see me in a few minutes. Right, apologies for the noise. If you get a fan in the background, it's bloody freezing in the workshop tonight. Okay, so here we are, the joys of working with balsa wood. Pencil, HB, balsa, ruler, if you want to be kind of accurate-ish. Scribe, balsa wood, go. Look at that, fantastic. Um, great big long lengths of planking. 
it's really difficult to task to decide how thick you want to make the planks. Um, and often I make them too thick and they're a bit overstated. Bar as a badge is not too bad for. I want to make some Lord of the Rings Lake Town stuff later this year, and there I'm going to have to get used to making much smaller scribed planks and things. But put them in there, get the old one there. Now, of course, the cool thing about this is going to be in a minute when we start to kind of draw perpendicular lines. Whoops, there we go, it's a bit of wobbly stuff, not going to matter too much. Now, of course, the cool thing about this then is the fact that I could. I know many times, and I would have done before, I would have cut out individual planks and then stuck them all back together, which just kind of like seems to defeat the logic of doing this, really. I'm going to keep this all as one piece, and I can just scribe into it. First of all, I'm going to take a, a scalpel, and I'm just going to shave off the edges on the outside, because it's easier than trying to scribe that there, down there, and down here, which is nice. Um, and uh, then we're going to root up the ends a little bit, going to trim them down a little, uh, and we'll look at how we weather the ends of the boards in a moment. Uh, let's take my scalpel across the way across there, right, good, so. And then for extra stuff, I like to draw in just woody kind of lines and, and knots and that kind of thing. And because uh, I want this to look like the rough end of the trench, I'm taking a wacky great big wire brush to this, and I'm going to weather across the bolts as well. This is going to drag out some of the fibres of the wood, drag down there. This is probably a little bit more heavy duty than I'd normally do, but that's absolutely fine. What's going to do again is make it easier to paint. Because it's doing all texture to it. I'm still gonna do what I normally do on the ends. Just actually go to some at the minute. It's still way too regular and all too neatly cut at the end, which is fine. I mean, they should all be cut the same length because the people who made this place, you know, they know what they're doing. Um, but uh, the ends is where the wood rots first. Some of these planks need to be a bit shorter. The other thing I'm going to do here on the end of the planks is either with a pencil or I could with a, a craft knife really get in to the end of the wood, dig out and make some rotten bits fall out to make here we go to make the end of the these planks. Uh, that bit more weathered and irregular because at the moment the whole thing is very very neat and tidy so well I've done it we've gone at it with the wire brush I'm going to do it a little bit more with a pencil just to actually tear out all the way through the bottle Okay, so here we go. There's my uh, platform on top of the other side, which works quite nicely. And you can see that I've put little bolster strips across here to hold it together in two pieces. And I've got these four nubs that hold the whole thing in place. In fact, the only thing that's kind of annoying now, well, not really annoying, but I hadn't foreseen, is I'm going to probably have to add another step onto my funky little staircase here. But that's not too much of a, a bother. That works quite nicely, and that now is ready to take a house put on the top here. Hurrah! I need to have a, a kind of 30 millimeter, at least 30 millimeter, what we're running outside. So these first one, two, three planks are gonna not be house. Let's build a building. I'm gonna start 
uh, here. Now, I can't remember what the original picture looked like, but I'm pretty sure it looked similar roof profile to the uh, uh, other two buildings I built so far, especially the Red House, this one, which has got that asymmetric roof line, uh, which is great, and I like the look of it, but I want to do something slightly different with this. So I'm going to build a one-story building with a um, gable end, and then I'm going to have thatched roof with kind of like... Uh, different dormers in. I'm going to put dormers in the top. Now the building's going to come apart. I'm not going to bother building the first floor onto it. I don't think. But um, that's what I want to get on with. So I'm going to use first of all uh, what we've got here. This looks like six millimetre. Yeah, six millimetre square section. I'm going to use this to make um, corner uh, to make the uprights uh, along around the rectangle. And um, then I'm going to put planking along the walls. The building itself is going to be stuck down to the base. And then that way, um, the roof will lift off and the base in the house will lift off and you'll be able to get to the underneath. That's the plan anyway. So first things first, I need to decide how tall I want this building to be. Um, and uh, I'm then going to cut out a whole bunch of uprights. I think... I don't know, I need some B&B &B figures, really. Okay, this little guy is one of my favourite models in the Burrows and Badgers figure range. He's a drunken weasel. It's a terrific model. Not much cop in a warband, really, but so much full of character. This really sums up B&B &B figures really well. Um, uh, I always like to have a few figures from the figure range that I'm making models for around and about while I'm building buildings. It makes sense. You can see how everything works up against them. So I'm going to use this guy as my kind of like ubiquitous Orlock for burrows and badgers and he is going to be used to measure the buildings up against him he is including the base and the base sometimes is important let's have a look uh on the base yeah well a little over we're getting that yep a little over 30 millimeters tall um but that's because he's on the base the figure itself much yeah very typically 27 or so to the eye line so here's what we're going to use um and i want my model just to be able to step inside when uh the door's gonna be on the front here i want them to be able to step inside when uh, uh and underneath the doorway so i'm going to make i think i'm going to make these upright piles about 30 millimeters long i'm going to make one let's have a think on here one probably two three four i might cut five there for the front five at the back uh and we're gonna need a couple to go around the sides as well that is what we're gonna do first okay you don't need to see me cutting up little bits of wood that's gonna be dull uh we'll have a look in a moment okay just remember people new blades as often as you can sharp blades less dangerous i know i always say i always say that's counterintuitive but it is you slip less less blood better model making so then to help me out make the walls what i've done then is change my slightly i've made six 30 millimeter uh bits of section what i've done is i've carved off tiny little bits of bolster to smooth them out totally unnecessary because it could be inside the model and you're probably never going to see it but just for me um, I then make cut a four inch, uh, a five inch, twelve and a half centimetre long um, strip of uh, five mil section. Now I'm going to stick on the top, so this then will become a kind of like a, a beam that supports. And this way, um, I'm going to have a thing, well, one solid thing. I'll be able to stick down here on the front of the model, which will be much better than trying to individually stick five, six little sticks. So I'm going to stick these to here, and then that will go on. Then I'm going to repeat that for the back of the model. Then I'm going to work out how the gable end is going to work. It's not going to be a really high-pitched roof, uh, which isn't necessarily particularly architecturally correct. Um, high-pitched roofs work much better than low. So a roof like this works much better than a roof like this. That's shedding water, especially when it comes to kind of thatch, which is probably what this building is going to be. But I want the whole 
well, most of Ben Fiat have a pretty low lying, low marshy kind of look. Um, and it's fantasy, so I don't care if it's not entirely real. I'm just doing this now and saying it on this video because I do know people who go, Oh, I think you'll find that the pitch of the roof is all wrong, especially for thatch. I know. But I'm doing this because it will look cool. Um, I'll have um, small, smaller beasts with lower buildings, um, which will work quite well. I don't want really, really tall, high roofs here. This whole setup, the village of Benfiot, I want to have a different kind of look and roof profile to my uh, more sophisticated Lunden scenery, which have got those very high, if you've seen them, tall gable ends with a curve in them look really cool I want this scenery to look quite different so I'm going to go for this lower pitch uh, uh, kind of roof type affair which kind of works and then we're going to look at that so uh, there that's what I'm doing that's why I'm doing it it's an artistic choice not an architectural choice people um, uh, but it's all about rule of cool as far as I'm concerned right anyway back on with the slicing up the bolts wood. okay so here's my original frame now got uh, basing as well because that then puts it a, a decent height to go with Mr. Ferret Weasel here. Let's put that up against there. Look, that kind of works. Uh, one of these I could fill in with a window pretty easily. I could put a cross bit there and then I'll get a window in there nicely. And then I may want to go on. Uh, this is the back. Definitely the back with a door in it and a window because this is going to be the front. Same thing. But you can see I've got a big gap here and I haven't carried on with this beam because I could put a little cross piece in here and this thing could become a shop window, door shop window, because even in the rough end of town, people would work in their house and sell stuff from the front. Um, so this will be, this walkway out here becomes part of the street. It's a medieval street, so um, that's going to be quite neat. So I'm going to take some, uh, well, about three mil bolster, cut a strip to fit in there and then I'll have a front and a back and then I'm just going to work on the gable ends. Hmm. I love it when a plan comes together. Right, so these these are my two um, low wall sections. And the houses would need gables. Um, but because I want to take the roof off, and I always I never seem to have a set way of doing this, um, I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two end frames the same height as these and then separate gables um, gable ends with the roof and they'll stick permanently into the roof so when I want to take the roof off this model it's only going to be a single story model when I want to take the roof off this model I'll just lift the whole roof off and there'll be an empty box on there stuck on top of that I think that's going to be my simplest solution um, and it's going to mean that this bit here is pretty straightforward to work out and then all I've got to do is work out how the gable end is going to work. So I'm going to make two more frames that sit inside. These are going to fall over now, watch. Oh my goodness, they didn't. Oh, how cool is that? I'm going to make two more frames that will fit inside here. Um, they're going to be about three inches across, roughly speaking. And that will give me a rectangle that I can actually stick down to um, the base and I could start to um, put the, the outside, the planking on top of that, that would be pretty cool. So, uh, a bit more 6mm square section is what I need. I hope I've got enough. Alright, oh, so changing my mind with this all the time. Uh, I've now cut this, I've stuck in this back bit over here, this frame, which is cool. I'm now sticking in um, the uprights on this end frame, and what I've decided is that this end frame is going to be able to take a door here and the door that's actually in the back over here i'm not going to fill that in um because <laughs> oh, there's nowhere to go now i've moved the whole thing over so there's good platform here and here outside which means that from a playability point of view it's much better the figures will be able to move around look there's tons of room outside the front of this building now which is quite cool even the big boys could just about run across there although they'd have to make some kind of difficult terrain move i think if they want to go quickly but this is quite neat because there's quite a lot of space, so I like that. Making better use of the uh, model, uh, which doesn't quite go with then the picture that I produced, but hey, the pictures are only ever, only ever uh, a rough idea. So that hopefully is going to drop in there. So that's now about three and a half inches across there. Gives me an inside floor space of this model of, yeah, three and a half 
by four and a half. It's quite a reasonable size building as a hovel goes. So that's just dropped in there. That's quite nice. That then is stuck on. And I have actually, although I normally say, oh, I use all-purpose adhesive or I use um, uh, PVA, Gorilla Glue, I have actually stuck this whole model together with little dabs of Army Painter Super Glue because uh, I wanted that instant kind of like attachment. That works perfectly well, although I am possibly going to go over it with a Mod Podge to seal it all in place. But that's cool. That gives me my the shape of my house um, and enough to start putting on the outside um, but now I've got a frame on that I'm gonna start framing um, the uh, a twin house pair twin house pair or load of cobblers now I've got a frame on that I'm gonna start to uh, frame uh, this one as well I think um, it is taking a little while framing these is a, probably a bit excessive I could just cut chunks of, of uh, balsa but it's gonna look really nice when it's done so from that point of view I think it's well worth spending that, that extra bit of time right what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna work out the footing of the building so I'm gonna get um, some six mil uh, balsa wood and I'm gonna cut it into lengths to work out where the base of the building is gonna go and where the doors are gonna go um, and then I will build up from that so the scalpel well we need more Six inch square section bolt wood. Been to another railway model shop, another one of my favourite uh, railway model shops, John Dutfield in Chelmsford. Look at that, see how much that says 66mm square section, 90 centimetres long, 65p. All of a sudden, it makes making models quite affordable. Right. So we're going to go. I'm not going to measure this, I'm just going to come up place it where I want the wall sections to be. Um, a little bit of a jetty here, quite a large jetty here, so about that much. How much is that? That is nine and a half, okay we're going to make that ten inches, ten centimetres, four inches over. Oh yeah. Check it out in a minute. Okay, so here's a footing for each of the two buildings. This one takes up the whole of the jetty, apart from this bit out the front. You know, bring boats alongside. Uh, this one has got a bit of walkway all the way around the outside for medium-sized beasts. That fits fine for large beasts and massive beasts. They will struggle, but you know, it's supposed to be precarious, kind of like wet alley kind of thing. So, from that point of view, hey, it's not a problem. That's the game, innit? I want these to be a bit hovely at this end of, the, of, of, the, of Ben Fliot. So, that's what we're going to go for. Uh, so, now I'm going to build frames on these, just like I did here. Um, and uh, that's going to involve a load more trimming this stuff down. And uh, making, I think we're going to go for on, um, going to make these, I know, probably going to keep them about the same, 30 millimeter tall, maybe 35 millimeter tall uprights, and then beams on the top. Frame there, frame there, and that'll start to give me a shape of what's going on. This building over here, then, I think is going to have a jetty over the top, so that the uh, top of the roof is going to, the first floor, that's the second floor for you colonial types. Um, is going to stick out over the jetty here a little bit, uh, and then that perch thing will go in the middle. Although it could go straight up, it'll go straight up. Then the the bird um, house in between, we'll just stretch between the two. We could do that, um, but I might jetty it over this side, so the you, the walkways are kind of covered. That'll look pretty cool. Yeah. Right. So um, <clears throat> yes, <laughs> I could save you air for now. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to make you watch me cut 35 millimeter bits of balsa wood. That's going to be a bit, a bit dull. You might come back to me when all of these are kind of like stuck on. Let's do it. <laughs> just FYI, while I'm working my way through this, we are on season three of Battlestar Galactica. 
Yes, we are. Um, because I have to kind of watch it at least once a year, the whole series, um, binge it, because it's still just one of the most epic bits of TV sci-fi ever made. Okay, so that's the first floor framing done. Um, stuck on. It's a bit rickety in places, which is great, because that's what I'm kind of going for. I've put extra long beams here, because these are going to have jetties. It's going to have a jetty over this house. Sticks out, so we're going to have uh, cover there. Um doorway going in here doorway going in there uh then a doorway here out onto this side and a doorway here um uh so the next thing i've got to do really i've got to put in a couple of beams cross beams from uh, the window um and then what i need to do is do the boarding the planking which i'm going to do in uh really thin balsa wood i'm going to, uh, going to do the planks we in shiplap uh, or just about certainly horizontal planking cut them out stick them on get it done as quick as I can I kind of think I think it's gonna look really kind of effective then I'm gonna make the uh, first floors to go on top I haven't even thought about what I'm doing yet with the lighthouse um, base that's gonna have a floor on there and then a first floor put on that as well um, which I have to get on with too as well, I suppose. Busy, busy, busy. I knew this should have been separate videos instead of one great big set of videos for all three buildings, but hey-ho. Here is the ship lap. Planks overlapping, running down. Could look cool. It is fiddly compared to making one bit and just fitting it. Although it's easy to fit around the windows. <clears throat> and um, this is going to take a little while longer than a uh, flat board. But what it is going to do, it's going to look cracking when it's all on. And that's going to make it actually easier for the model to be painted as well because the ship lap will give it a natural uh, uh, texture for dry brushing and the like. So from that point of view, um, uh, it's definitely what I'm going to go through with here. And although these buildings aren't at all going to look particularly realistic and it's a fantasy setting, etc, etc. There are loads of ship lap buildings like this in East Anglia where I live in Essex and Suffolk and Norfolk. And that's where Benfield is supposed to be. So it'll give that kind of like, for me, it'll give a kind of like a local feeling, which is pretty cool. Um, and working with 0.8mm bolster when you're just doing it flat is really, really simple. There's the, the thickness of the profile. Can we swear it's there? You see the end walls? They're sticking over a little bit here at the minute, but it doesn't matter too much because I, you know, I could easily just take a pair of clippers, cut all that down. But I'm going to put um, planking in here next. Uh, in fact, what I'll probably do is plank down the other side and fit planks in the middle so these bits jut out. And then I'll take a pair of clippers and clip off all the excess. So, I'm going to carry on. And it looks nice on the inside too, actually. Um, don't know how easy it is to see that there. But it looks pretty cool. And the inside, the inside of the model will get painted up quite nicely too. Uh, which all round is going to be pretty cool. I said pretty cool quite a lot there, haven't I? Oh, well. I know there are people who watch these videos and count how it ties, I say, from a point, a certain point of view, or from that point of view. So in this case, you can count how many ties, I said, pretty cool, which is lots. Pretty cool. Okay, so more shiplap all around the rest of the ground floor of this building. Go! So I've decided to change the design on this. Now it's all stuck on and rigid and solid. And I want to drop the front of this building back uh, another couple of inches. Um... So the door will be back here because I want to have a big overhang with um, uh, piles here holding up the roof because this is going to become the pottery. I've got some really nice resin stuff from Iron Gate Scenery. 
um, which is a potter's wheel and a bunch of pots and stuff. And that'd be really cool if that's all that's odd. So I've now got to go back to my original design, take a scalpel, we'll take some of this apart and uh, move all this stuff back, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. But uh, hey-ho, you get these ideas halfway through a model, that's what you have to do, isn't it? All right, this is where <laughs> scalpels come in handy because they're long and thin, I can reach in. I'm having to cut through. Um, I thought I stuck this one all together with super glue, so... The links are pretty brittle, and what I'm going to do, well not brittle, they're hard, but solid, so I can cut through the actual super glue itself. Because what I'm trying to do is salvage the balsa wood. Uh, this long bit here, I want to keep sticking out, I'm going to put a different kind of upright in there, pillar support. So all of this area under here will be undercover, but to do that, I want to, and I want to drop this bit back. So um, what I'm trying to do is we'll cut through, well hey, gently. Didn't cut myself, Mum! And that can twist out, hopefully. Yep, there we go. Twist that one off. Yep. So these little fellas here should still be good to do the front of the building. They're just going to drop back. If I can get them off the base successfully. There we are. So I'm just going to drop that back. Here, I haven't measured this, so it's not going to be particularly square over there, but that's fine. I don't mind the old wonky building. I've got to get used to wonky buildings. My buildings are normally way too nice, but see, look, that. I think I'll do that. That'll now be the front, and this whole area here is going to be undercover. For my potter's wheel, nothing else. I'll be able to have a potter's wheel stuck there, and it'll just be an interesting bit of... different kind of uh, dwelling which is cool um, and that way there it's uh, yeah out and now I've kept these on I might take these off and extend them right over here who knows see how we go pots was quite big mind you but they look quite good um, but that way there I've got this kind of floating market type thing people in this village don't always walk around on um, wooden piles sometimes they go backwards and forwards on boats and rafts to do their shopping who knows uh, this is going to make a different interesting kind of like part of this village which is fine by me okay there we go then look different that will be covered pottles wheel under there wicked Okay, so now we have uh, first floor on this one. Yeah, all planked. Window, window, only with the other window. Probably could do with the other extra window, really. But hey -ho. Uh, that sits on top of that like that. If I use two hands, it'll probably go on there better. <laughs> uh, we have uh, ship lap clinker built first floors here now I need to do the second floor the ground floors these are the ground floors got to do the first floors um, on both of these and a roof on this and I feel really bad because I haven't done anything at all on this guy over here so um, right now I think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna have a think about I've got a choice to make at this point oh, I go I uh, sack off the lighthouse and do that all as a, a third video all by itself or I build a floor or two for that and then do these floors next time. I could do a bit in the middle as well. This building here is so big. This is so much. This should have been a video all by itself. Um, yeah, one of those. I think I could have bitten off more than I could chew moments here. But um, we're going to keep going and see what happens. Floors and upper stories, I think, is the thing to do. This one doesn't need upper story. This just needs a roof. Uh, but these two here need upper story. Because um, it's the whole point. And then with an archway through there. Um, yeah, so what are we going to do? Floor for this, floor for this, upper stories go. Uh, first floors on these uh, on these two buildings here. Uh, this time I'm using 2.5mm uh, thick balsa. I've cut one piece to go on there. And I cut one piece to go on there because, of course, they're going to have jetties. They're going to be slightly higher at the front. And uh, the next trick is to. Um, 
unlike all the separate planks on the uh, uh, shiplap, this is going to be a solid piece. I'm going to take a biro, draw the planks into the wood, uh, and make it that much quicker. Um, I might cut holes for ladders or staircase or whatever else, but it's not massively important here. The most important bit is getting the next level built. Um, I need to go back to drawing as well because I can't remember what the roof lines look like. Woohoo! Okay. Let's do it, people. Let's get the borrow out and draw in the planking. It's first floor time. You can see I've done the first floor on the House of Stilts. I didn't think that you needed to see me do that and that and this. Uh, it's all going to be the same technique. So uh, we'll have a look at this when we're doing the roofs. But now we're going to make the first floor on these two. In some ways, I could quite happily turn these into one-story dwellings down on the swamp. But I really liked the drawing. <laughs> And the archway and the uh, idea of the um, birds perch the third house up here above the water. So we're going to stick with the original plan and we're going to make it. I'm only liking the idea of them making them one level dwellings because I'm frankly being a bit lazy and I want to get this video done. I have got to add at this point, because I can't remember what bits I've shot and what I have now. Um, I don't think... I'm going to get the lighthouse done in this video. I got this far with it. I want this to be a really nice kind of cool, whimsical kind of model. So uh, I'm going to put this to one side. I'm not going to complete the rest of this in this build. I'm going to give this its own video. I'm going to get on with this too and this one over here. So uh, what's next? Uh, I'm going to put uprights, stick uprights onto this. Uh, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, similar number on here. And then I'm going to overlap, shiplap the walls. So the shiplap overhangs the top here and holds it in place. I've cut floorboards on both of these. One solid piece of balsa. And I've put one six mil strip of balsa here. Look. Uh, so that sits in between the uprights down below so that will help locate it and hold it in place and then when I do the walls they're going to have shiplap that will hang down the sides here and that will all hold that all in place really nicely it's an effective little model it's coming on real real good but I want to get it done so um, that's what we're going to do we're going to build the first floor on here and the first floor on here uh, and then the roofs are going to be uh, probably going to be separate and I've got to make the um, perch the other dwelling uh, as well so from that point of view i need to give that some thought i might make the roof all one thing with the other bit in it yeah so you draw these things you come up with these great ideas and they look great on paper and then you've got to actually figure out how they're going to work sometimes that can be complicated especially for making models like me where they all come apart so we can go inside them um still uh come and have a look when i've got a bunch of wood stuck on this and we'll see where we're at Right, I haven't decided which way round um, the gables, the ends of the roofs are going to go on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build just the first floor framing and shiplap like this. So it's going to be flat topped. You can see the the uh, uprights in here. So there's a bottom bit and then the uprights and then the top bit and then they'll shiplap that. Uh, that way there I've got options as to whether I want to have um, gables this way round which is okay apart from the fact it's going to make it awkward for the um the perch or i might have the gables this way round although i seem to remember this building having a upright and a we might do that and then that because then that way there that would make it nice and easy for the perch to sit on i mm, got to be creative with all of this it might not look too much like the other model, the picture, but phew, hey ho, whatever. Let's do the framing first. What I need to do then is I need to cut myself some more six millimeter bolster to go down here, and then loads of uprights like this are going to be thirty millimeters tall to sit on the frame, and then the frame needs a roof, a top bit as well, and then I do exactly the same over here. Right, I won't bore you with the trimming of bolster wood. I'll see you in a moment. Normally I'd trim all these bits of bolster and take off all the edges and all the rest of it. But you know what? This is going to be framing in a slummy, slummy dwelling down the bottom end of the marsh. It's not going to make any difference at all. And to speed up the whole process and make less mess, I'm just cutting them and sticking them on. 
<laughs> having a fall off. Fuck sake. Right, so wooden frames on me topped on me buildings here. We've seen done the ship lap. You've seen the ship lap before. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. The ship lap these two. I think to be quite honest. By the time I've done that, there's going to be so much footage we're going to have to call that a day on um, part two of this year um, build, which means, regrettably, I didn't want to, but I think I'm going to have to have a third video doing the roofs and the paint jobs and the finishing and everything else. Because right now, well, this is going to take a little while, and it's going to be a couple of weeks since the last video, and I want to get it out, so let's do it. Let's ship it up and see where we are. Of course, I've also got to come up with the bit that goes in between here. Um, now, what I could do, what I could do, thinking about it before I do any ship lapping, is put a bit in between here, um, that, uh, makes this whole thing one piece. I can't help thinking that's going to be dead fiddly. Um, yeah. I could do. I mean, it could go in here. Some fiddling is required, I think. Right, decision made. I'm going to do the ship lapping, do the ship lapping, and then I'm not going to worry about this bit until the next video when I've built the roof for this and the roof for this and I can see how they work together and then that will hopefully solve my issue of how the whole thing goes together. Some of you might accuse me of bottling it in this video and, um, and running away from the issue. And you know what? You could be right. Others of you might think that I am a wise and sage model maker. Um... Well, we'll have to wait till the next video to see who was right, won't we, really? Um, Hey-ho. Right, get on with the bloody woodwork, Eagling. Come on, crack on, crack on, son. We're nearly done, we're nearly done. Okay, so what do we need? We need 0.8mm balsa wood. That's what we need. Now, the cool thing with this is actually, I know I've been cutting this with uh, scalpels and stuff, but actually, to speed up the whole process, I reckon I'm going to be able to take a decent pair of scissors like this that are not used for cutting fabric and just cut it to length this way. Check this out. 0.8 millimeter balsa wood. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bang. You don't need to see the rest. Come and see me at the end. There we are. So that's two first floors uh, covered in shiplap all the way around. What I haven't done is cut holes in the floor here for stairwells or ladders or whatever else. And I don't think, to be quite honest, I'm going to bother. Um, I think that the nature of these models and the amount they're going to get used, um, it's not necessary, really isn't necessary. So um, what I've done here then is actually got to the point where I'm probably going to stop. That's what we're going to do. Well, I think we're at the end of this part of a video. Okay then, so... Uh, yeah, I'm looking a bit windswept and interesting this afternoon. I know uh, that's because this has been filmed on Saturday after Storm Eunice uh, and uh, just walking out of the house and down the workshop. Down the workshop, it's about 15 feet away. Um, it was enough to ruin my completely gorgeous, kind of like professionally coiffured look. Um, anyway, uh, this is the end of this part of the video. Now, I had initially uh, thought that this was going to be just two videos, uh, and it clearly not. I initially thought that doing a, a batch build of buildings for Burrows and Badgers, batch build of buildings for Burrows and Badgers, a batch, but, but, uh, making a load of buildings all at the same time for Burrows and Bar Badgers would be straightforward and an easy thing to do and achieve, and it'll be a snappy set of videos. However, of course, life has got in the way. Life has got in the way partly because I've also been making this stuff and work and everything else, and um, oh, and my wife rolled her ankle broke her ankle that's kind of like slowed things down too um so where we got to then well we've got to the point where uh this pair of buildings now has a uh, ground floor first floor done and he's ready to have roof and chimneys added to it and the bit in the middle okay um so uh, that's definitely going to go into the next video this model uh, although i haven't shown any um 
uh, um, details in this video of making the roof and adding the chimney um, has got a roof and added chimney to it. I'm now at the point then where I'm stopping this time round, definitely. Uh, and I know several people are going to be disappointed by the time we got to the end of this video because I've had several messages from people watching going, oh, I can't wait to see what you've done with the lighthouse. So uh, to Gary, for example, I'm really sorry, Gary. Um, the lighthouse has got this far. <laughs> Oops. Um, as I said a little while ago, I might have bitten off too much I can chew for this. And I've decided I am actually going to make this uh, as a separate video. I want that whimsical fantasy look. It's not, it's going to go great with these things. I'm going to definitely do it in the next little while. But frankly, I need to concentrate on getting these three buildings um, done and complete. Uh, and then I'm going to make one video uh, all about the building of the lighthouse when I actually pull my finger out and get it done. And that might not be instant because I've also got to do my uh, uh, Patreon build for Silver Bayonet. It is coming, fella, I promise. So from that point of view, um, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're not too disappointed that I haven't finished these buildings all the way to the end. There will be one more video to get these buildings built for Burris and Badgers and that is going to be in the very near future because I need to crack on with it and get this project finished so I can get on with other stuff. So uh, thanks very much for watching uh, Magrathia Builder of Worlds. I really hope that you enjoyed this one and found it a useful video um, uh, to give you inspiration to work with Bolsterwood uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, make sure then you uh, like and subscribe. Click subscribe down below, down there, down there. You know how to do it. It makes a lot of sense. That way there you won't miss part three and see these buildings get finished off uh, or the windmill build or anything else not windmill it's not windmill is it lighthouse or the lighthouse build um and that way there you won't miss any of that kind of stuff um and then of course please do leave comments down below even if you're disappointed i didn't get the lighthouse built but you know hey suck it up sorry guys that's the real world um uh, but do leave comments down below how you think it's going uh, and what else you'd like to see me do on this channel. And of course, don't forget, if you would really like to support this channel, then you could always sign up to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Magathea Builder Worlds, and you might be able to win yourself Magathea Builder Worlds built scenery for you too, like the silver bayonet model I'm going to do in the very near future. Otherwise, uh, thanks very much for watching. Keep an eye out for the next video, the last video, oh, the last part of this build. Uh, I will see you again next time. Thanks for watching Magrathia Builder of Worlds. Uh, I've got to get on with this now because I've got way too much to do. So, unfortunately, um, we're not doing rooftops. <sighs> yeah, yeah.